Ray Fossey. 74 years old. He's been doing A's games since 1986. And I was trying to figure out the right words to come up with here and, and describe why he resonates so much with the fan base. And I think you see this in all sports and all teams and all leagues. You know, players on teams, they come and go. Coaches and managers on teams, they come and go. Front office executives for teams, they come and go. In fact, even ownerships for teams come and go. But for a lot of people, including myself, Ray Fossey's voice, his face, his presence uh, is something I've only ever known with the Oakland A's. Like I said, 1986. I was five when Ray started doing this. I'm 40 now, and I get the chance to work with him. That's why he resonates so much. It's the only thing some people have ever known, but the longevity. I cannot stress how hard it is in our business in this day and age to maintain longevity. People love that. People appreciate that. And I'm not just sitting here saying, well, they're comfortable with that. It's what they want. It's what reminds them of the Oakland A's. His deliverance, uh, the delivery, his presence on a, on a TV broadcast, on a radio broadcast, People associate with that with the Oakland A's. And you've heard the expression, well, people are dedicated to their craft. Yes, Ray is definitely dedicated to his craft. But he's also about a thousand times more dedicated to the Oakland A's than anything else. He, uh, he kind of put this aside and didn't talk about this for... What I'm just learning is 16 years. I knew there were some things going on. I didn't know specifics. I didn't nearly know for how long. And I think that also speaks to, you know, Ray's, Ray's demeanor about and, and thoughts about, you know, being a front-facing person, being a public figure. He didn't want to make this ever about him. He was always about the Oakland A's. Didn't want cancer or any talk of that to come about in 16 years of knowing that he was fighting it and still is and you know now now in reverse i think about all those strong handshakes he used to give me and hopefully will soon again it's 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 hard to digest now looking back in reverse and it also i guess is a reminder when you when you meet somebody, whether you like them or not, whether you think they're great or not, doesn't matter. When you meet anybody, everybody, somebody's always got something else going on that you just didn't know about. And I'll tell you what, no one Foss right now, of course, he's, he's realizing that he, he wants to get better and there's a fight to be had here. And that's upsetting, and I'm sure that's depressing in, in, a, in a certain, in a very certain regard. But I'll tell you what crushes him even more right now, and this just speaks to what I said before. He's missing A's games, and that, I guarantee, among the many things that he's dealing with, that his family's dealing with, that's what's getting at him right now. And that's a message right there. That's a statement right there. You know, I can't wait until he comes back. I hope in the meantime we have some we have some symbols of appreciation to show him. You know, I, I broadcasting is a very one one way street. And it had been for most of his career. Like, you know, social media exists now, he's not on it. It's a two way street now, but for most of his career, all of his career, it's been a one way street. He's delivering to you. And he hears back from fans. He meets him at the Coliseum or on the road trips. And that's another thing, by the way. You want to talk about dedication to the craft. You know, traveling on every road trip, doing the last season, you know, with COVID looming around everybody. At n and now knowing, you know, his age and his health situation. And for him to just muscle right through it. And never complain. Come on, all of us complain. About 162 games, here's a four-hour and 45-minute game, <laughs> never complains about it. What does that tell you?
But I, I want to go back to this, you know. I hope there's some appreciation shown to him. I hope he gets to see some of that. I hope this is an opportunity, at the very least, recover from this, come back, get healthy, and at least have this opportunity to have people show you how much they appreciate you. But, Foss, man, you don't even need to call one more game to already have legendary status with this team forever. Think about that for a second. Think about a ball player, you know, when you're like, is he a Hall of Famer or not? And then there's some guys where you're like, yeah, he, he will be, but he'd have to do a few more things. In terms of, of, of your contributions to this team, Foss, you don't have to do anything else. I know you want to, and I hope you do, and I can't wait till you do. But just know that you don't have to. You've already, you've already secured that. And I know you weren't worried about that, but let me, let me speak on behalf of you know, fans and being a fellow broadcaster. You're 74. You have approached this like a young man for a lot of years. And I love the grind. And I think there's a lot to admire from it. And I think there's a lot of people who, who, could, who could be inspired and learn by what you've carved in Oakland since 1986. So I'll leave it with that. You know, best wishes. We are thinking about you a lot. You'll be missed here down the stretch. And I hope it's only a matter of sooner than anything else that we'll see you back doing what you want to be doing. And when the time is right, when the time is right.